So how many of you have or know kids in primary school? Can I have a show of hands? And how many of you expect that when they graduate that they will have basic reading, writing, and math skills? Show of hands. Now, what if I were to tell you that even though they have these skills, they will still be considered not fully literate? And that is because organizations like the OECD and UNESCO and technology education associations have broadened their definition of literacy to include technology literacy, the ability to access, to manage, to communicate with, and to create around technology. And the fact of the matter is that many primary schools in this country and around Europe don't teach technology education. Or if they do, it's just a small amount. Now, this is a personal problem for me because I have a son in primary school here in the Netherlands, and he's not learning anything about technology. And this bothered me so much that last fall, with a co-founder, I actually launched an after-school technology academy here in Amsterdam. We teach children ages 4 to 12 the basic concepts behind technology, and we teach in Dutch and English. So why is technology and programming education so important? Simply put, this kind of education provides kids with 21st century skills, these higher order skills that they need, that they need to be prepared for in the future. And that is critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, and creativity. See, with technology education, it's all about coming up with solutions. And so you take knowledge and concepts and you apply them by actually designing and developing and prototyping and testing and going back and testing again. And there's not one way to come to a solution. Struggle and failure are part of the process, but that prepares kids to be entrepreneurs and inventors and innovators. So the $64,000 question, what is programming and technology education? I'll tell you what it's not. It's not iPads in schools, because that's technology in education. And it's not teaching kids to code in specific programming languages, because that's technical skills. I define technology and programming education as an edu education that provides kids with a solid foundation to understand technology, how it works, why it works, and how to think in order to create new solutions. So in my academy, we combine some subjects. We combine technology literacy, computer science, programming, and design. And we teach the kids the concepts behind technology, the concepts that are found in all kinds of technology, gadgets, apps, uh, computers, etc. These are concepts like systems thinking, design, prototyping, resources and requirements. And then we add subtopics like binary codes and like algorithms and sequences and computational thinking. And to really bring these concepts to life, we actually structure our classes around challenges. So the kids work in teams and they design and they follow through with structured design processes till they come to solutions. So I thought the easiest way to show you what we do is actually to, if you'll run the video, please, is to show you what we do with children as young as four to six years of age. So the class is all about creating a robot head and then playing some games. But what you don't see is the theory and the research and the pedagogy behind this. We are teaching them the concept of design. We take them through a structured design process. There are design requirements, there are designed resources that they have to do. And then we start to slowly introduce the concept of programming. We ask them to put the robot heads on. And we tell them, robots don't think. Humans have to tell them what to do. Now, some of you might be laughing because of artificial intelligence. But we maintain the illusion for children. And what we do is we give them a piece of paper. And on that paper are instructions to get through an obstacle course. And we say, that paper is a program. And the instructions are called commands. And this is how we slowly introduce young children to the concept of programming. And over time, we build that knowledge up so that as they get older, they have a stronger and stronger foundation to understand these things. And the beautiful thing about technology education is that you don't need technology to teach technology education. We use paper and pens and games and even cardboard boxes. Of course, we bring in the technology. The kids want to play with the programmable robots and also the Raspberry Pi DIY computer kits. But you don't need that for technology education. 
So we've been teaching since last fall, and here I want to show, share some observations that we have from our classes, and they're just off the top of my head. There's no scientific research behind this, but we confuse technical skills with thinking skills. So a mother comes to me and says, oh, Johnny's been programming since he's been three months old, and he's so good, and I don't think he's going to like your class. But Johnny comes into class and he's confused because he's great at the technical stuff, but he has no idea why things are working and how things are working. So we need to bridge the gap between these kids that have all these great technical skills, but they don't know how to think. The second observation is that kids are really uncomfortable with failure and with uncertainty. What do I do? Tell me what to do. And our teacher, who is so wonderful, she's from Finland and she's very stoic, but also very gentle, says, I don't know. Figure it out. Try to figure it out. Or ask Susie over there because she seems like she knows what she's doing. Or let's try to figure it out together because I don't even know what to do. And you can see the kids go, whoa, really? Another observation, kids need help. They need to develop collaboration and teamwork skills. I have seen kids come to blows over Lego Mindstorms robots. We are actually developing classes that have activities whereby you can't complete the activity unless everybody on your team is collaborating and providing input. And lastly, I want to say this because it's very important. Girls rock. They show the same aptitude for technology and programming as boys. But the problem is the parents come to me and say, ooh, it's a bit technical, it's a bit difficult. She likes ballet or gymnastics or arts and crafts. The gender divide starts as young as four years old, and we have to correct this. So, <laughs> so the good news is that ministries of education around Europe are finally waking up and realizing that they need to put technology and programming into the, the curriculum as mandatory subjects. Fin uh, the UK did it last year, Finland will do it in 2016, and the Netherlands will do it in 2020. So we need to start preparing, and we need to start developing the curriculum and lesson plans. So how do we prepare? We can start right now. We can say to teachers in schools, bring in technology into, into the schools. Start with little mini technology festivals. Bring in people who can demo technology and expose people. Participate in EU Code Week because it happens every fall and schools and organizations across Europe actually do great and cool things to expose kids to technology. Parents, send your kids to after-school technology <laughs> programs. Send them to these coding boot camps. Send them to hackathons and designathons. Break out computers with them. We believe so much in this that we want to be the change that we want to see in education, our academy. So what we do is we share our lessons. We open up our classrooms to teachers who want to understand how you teach technology and programming. So will our children reimagine social media or will they be content to keep using Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram? Will our children reinvent online gaming or will they continue just to use Minecraft? A couple weeks ago, my son came to me and he said, Mom, I have a great idea for a new technology. I'm going to put a micro, a mini computer into your glasses. You wear it all day, and then your eyes get perfect, and then you don't need glasses anymore. And I said, whoa, this is why I did this, his thinking, his thinking. And before I could get really excited, he said, uh, uh, by the way, does that mean I get 10 extra minutes on the iPad tonight? Because we have a 10-minute iPad rule. And I said, nice try, but good thinking. <laughs> will our kids reimagine mobile computing, or will they be just happy to use the iPad? Probably both. I want to end my talk by mentioning the tagline that my company uses. And when people hear it, they say, oh, it's so cute. But that's not what we're going for. That's not what we're going for. We go for this, we say this, because we have purpose and intention and ambition. And that is, watch out, Silicon Valley. We are coming for you. Thank you.